Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is the 49th tutorial in this course and in this tutorial we are going to check out the call by reference method of passing arguments to functions. In the last tutorial we talked about the call by value method and I told you that when you use the call by value method the changes that you make to the formal parameters in the call function are not reflected to the actual parameters in the calling function. So if you guys remember we had a function called swap using which we tried to swap values of two integers but we were unable to do that because the changes that we made in the swap method were not reflected to the actual variables in the main function. Right? So we're going to see how the call by reference method allows us to do this and uh, it helps us overcome the problem that we face uh, when we pass values to functions instead of references. So we're going to check out the syntax of the call by reference method and how it actually does what it does uh, in this tutorial. So as you can see using code blocks I've uh, saved a file I've given it the name call underscore by underscore reference it has the extension dot c on line 1 in this file I have my header file on line 2 I have declared a function called swap and it's of void data type because it's not going to return anything and the parameter wrist is uh, is pretty new it's unusual uh, I'm sure for you guys because we haven't seen such a parameter list thus far in this course and uh, it has pointer declarations and I won't expect you to understand this completely as of now because we haven't covered pointers in this course yet but uh, for the time being just know that the function swap is not going to receive normal values it's going to receive uh, addresses of two integers and that is why you have to inform the compiler that this function is in some way special and uh, it's going to receive references instead of normal values and the way you do that is by typing in integer uh, sorry the int keyword uh, for as many variable uh, references as you're going to pass so this function is going to receive two that's why you have the int keyword twice in the parameter list and then you have to follow the keyword with the asterisk symbol right so the asterisk symbol tells the compiler that the swap method is going to receive uh, two references and uh, those references would be stored in two pointer variables right so on line 3 I have my main function and on line 4 I have the opening curly brace for main. On line 5 I have declared the uh, two integer variables. I have given the names a and b. On line 6 I have given a the value 20. On line 7 b gets the value 10. On line 8 I have a printf statement that uh, is used to display the original values of a and b. So uh, the original values which are 10 and 20 would be which are 20 and 10 respectively for a and b would be printed and on line 9 I have called the swap method with the addresses of a and b and uh, as we have seen in this course on multiple occasions when we've talked about scanf and we also have uh, seen a tutorial on the address of operator to get the address of a variable we have to use the ampersand symbol so that's what we've done here instead of calling the swap function with the values of a and b as we did in the previous tutorial we've uh, used the ampersand symbol and passed the addresses of a and b instead right so the control would be transferred to line 12 after this statement uh, on line 9 gets executed and on line 12 you have the function definition for swap and uh, again you have the void keyword here because the function is not going to return any value to main and uh, inside the parameter list I have declared my formal parameters or the dummy parameters which are x and y right so x and y again are pointer variables that's why you have the asterisk symbols before the variable names and uh, x is going to receive the address of a and y is going to receive the address of b inside the function definition I have a temporary variable called temp using which I'm going to try to swap the values of a and b so as you can see I don't have statements like temp equals x and x equals y and y equals temp uh, as in the previous tutorial but we have temp equals star x and asterisk x equals asterisk y and asterisk y equals temp and the reason why we have things this way is that x and y are pointer variables right so x contains the address of a it doesn't contain the value that's in a Right, so to get the value that's stored in the address that's contained in X, I have to put an asterisk symbol before using it. Right, so this is the reason why we've used uh, asterisk X equals asterisk Y. So we're trying to swap values of A and B by using their addresses. Right, and uh, temp is not returned to the main function. 
So the changes are reflected to the original values here. And let me run this program to show uh, how it does what it does. So you can see in the output window, I get the message original values of A and B are 20 and 10 respectively. And on the next line, I see the message new values of A and B are 10 and 20 respectively. So the values have been successfully swapped. Now, I do not expect you to understand this program uh, completely in the first go. I wouldn't be surprised if you guys have doubts. And uh, that's normal because we haven't covered pointers yet. And pointers uh, initially can be a little overwhelming because, uh, you know, the way they are used in C programs, I mean, most of the times, um, you know, <laughs> people do a lot of fancy stuff using pointers. So pointers can be slightly tricky, but trust me, when we discuss pointers in this course, and if you would revisit this tutorial, or if you understood this in the first go, that's just brilliant, that's fantastic. But if you haven't, then, uh, you know, don't be worried because we're going to get back to all of this stuff later on in this course and we're going to check out this tutorial one more time. Uh, I assure you that we're going to check out this program again and uh, if any loopholes uh, are left in our understanding of this program, then we're going to cover those loopholes when we talk about pointers, right? So thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I'll see you guys in the next one and please subscribe to my channel in case you haven't already and I'll see you soon.